So should we be praying about polygamy? No, but also, yes? Hi everyone, Nemo here. In the latest General Conference, Dale G. Renland told us, Personal revelation will be in harmony with the commandments of God and the covenants we've made with Him. Consider a prayer that goes something like this. Heavenly Father, church services are boring. May I worship Thee on the Sabbath in the mountains or on the beach. May I be excused from going to church and partaking of the sacrament, but still have the promised blessings of keeping the Sabbath day holy. In response to such a prayer, we can anticipate God's response. My child, I've already revealed my will regarding the Sabbath day. When we ask for revelation about something God has already given clear direction, we open ourselves up to misinterpreting our feelings and hearing what we want to hear. So if God has already given clear direction, we shouldn't be asking for revelation. And this is backed up by the Foundations of the Restoration Teaching Manual. Before concluding the lesson, it may be wise to tell students that some people who have apostatized from the church are practicing plural marriage today. They urge people to pray and ponder about whether it is right to practice plural marriage today. We should not seek to receive revelation that is contrary to what the Lord has revealed through his prophets. So should we be praying about polygamy? No, but also, yes? In general, when he taught the, the principle to someone, he invited them, encouraged them to pray about it, to receive their own witness and confirmation. And while most of the people who he taught plural marriage to during this period initially were very shocked and maybe even resistant, we also have many accounts of men and women receiving manifestations, receiving testimonies for themselves. Why does Joseph Smith get to run around encouraging members to pray about whether polygamy is a true principle and those resultant spiritual epiphanies are just fine? And why did he do that when it was contrary to God's already revealed will? God had already revealed his feelings about polygamy to his prophet Jacob in the Book of Mormon. But the word of God burdens me because of your grosser crimes. For behold, thus saith the Lord, this people begin to wax in iniquity, they understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms because of the things which were written concerning David and Solomon his son. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before me, saith the Lord. And who brought Jacob's words to light? Good old Joseph Smith himself. One could argue that Joseph Smith was trying to seek to excuse himself in committing whoredoms because of the things which were written concerning David and Solomon his son. Especially because DNC 132 starts with, Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Joseph, that inasmuch as you have inquired of my hand to know and understand wherein I, the Lord, justified my servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as also Moses, David, and Solomon, my servants, as touching the principle and doctrine of their having many wives and concubines. The Lord did not justify David and Solomon, according to Jacob too, and Joseph Smith should have known that from the Book of Mormon, which he revealed. But wait, Nemo, what about verse 30? For if I will, saith the Lord of hosts, raise up a seed unto me, I will command my people, otherwise they shall hearken unto these things. True enough, but that then makes Renlund's point even more farcical, because God made clear that multiple wives and concubines were an abomination, and said he would command it as and when he wants to raise up a seed. So then you have a situation where you can't pray to God to ask him about something, even though he said he'll let you know if it changes, so you better just wait for God's commandment to hit you like a bolt of lightning then, rather than doing what Joseph Smith did and asking, or what DNC 9 commands you to do. But behold, I say unto you that you must study it out in your mind, then you must ask me if it be right. So what's going on here? Is this because a modern prophet trumps a scriptural prophet? Well, no, because it's not just polygamy. God already revealed his will to Brigham Young regarding the priesthood ban. And they never can hold the priesthood or share in it until all the other descendants of Adam have received the promises and enjoyed the blessings of the priesthood and the keys thereof until the last ones of the residue of Adam's children are brought up to that favourable position, the children of Cain cannot receive the first ordinances of the priesthood. They were the first that were cursed, and they will be the last from whom the curse will be removed. Honestly, I'm not sure that's what Christ meant when he said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last.
Marquis Peterson made clear that Brigham Young did not foresee some earthly day when the curse would be removed, but black members would have to wait until after the resurrection of all the other people on earth before they could have the priesthood. When all of the other children of Adam have had the privilege of receiving the priesthood and of coming into the kingdom of God and of being redeemed from the four quarters of the earth and have received the resurrection from the dead, then it will be time enough to remove the curse from his posterity. He deprived his brother the privilege of pursuing his journey through life and of extending his kingdom by multiplying upon the earth. And because he did this, he is the last to share the joys of the kingdom of God. But then, way sooner the Brigham Young taught that God intended... In early June of this year, the First Presidency announced that a revelation had been received by President Spencer W. Kimball, extending priesthood and temple blessings to all worthy male members of the Church. President Kimball has asked that I advise the conference that after he received this revelation, which came to him after extended meditation and prayer in the sacred rooms of the Holy Temple, he presented it to his counselors, who accepted it and approved it. Should Spencer W. Kimball have even been praying about the matter if God had already revealed his will through Brigham Young, another modern prophet? And okay, those prophets were about a hundred or so years apart, but it doesn't even take that long, sometimes, for them to come into this conflict. In 2016, Russell M. Nelson said regarding the November 2015 policy, The First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles counsel together and share all the Lord has directed us to understand and to feel individually and collectively. And then we watch the Lord move upon the President of the Church to proclaim the Lord's will. This prophetic process was followed in 2012 with the change in minimum age for missionaries. And again with the recent additions to the Church's handbook, consequent to the legalization of same-sex marriage in some countries, filled with compassion for all and especially for the children. We wrestled at length to understand the Lord's will in this matter, ever mindful of God's plan of salvation and of His hope for eternal life for each of His children. We considered countless permutations and combinations of possible scenarios that could arise. We met repeatedly in the temple in fasting and prayer and sought further direction and inspiration. And then, when the Lord inspired His prophet, President Thomas S. Monson, to declare the mind of the Lord and the will of the Lord, each of us during that sacred moment felt a spiritual confirmation. It was our privilege as apostles to sustain what had been revealed to President Monson Revelation from the Lord to his servants is a sacred process. He defended it as revelation, the Lord's will. God gave them clear direction. But then in 2019... The First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve have com continued to seek the Lord's guidance and to plead with him in behalf of his children who were affected by the 2015 policy. We knew that this policy created concern and confusion for some and heartache for others. That grieved us. Whenever the sons and daughters of God weep, for whatever reason, we weep. So our supplications to the Lord continued. Why? Why did you continue to seek the Lord's guidance? Why did you plead with Him when, according to Renland, when we ask for revelation about something God has already given clear direction, we open ourselves up to misinterpreting our feelings and hearing what we want to hear. So when Russell M. Nelson then goes on to say, As a result of our continued supplication, we recently felt directed to adjust the policy. How are we, as members of the Church, to know that this isn't a case of to misinterpreting our feelings and hearing what we want to hear? Because God had already given clear direction. Now, I personally agree with revoking the November 2015 policy. I firmly believe it was a terrible policy that damaged families. And to be fair, you could argue that asking about the policy in the first place was just a case of the church leaders misinterpreting our feelings 
and hearing what we want to hear. Therein lies the flaw in Dale G. Renlund's logic. The church cannot evolve and change through continuing revelation. It cannot make progress to undo racist and discriminatory positions instituted by prophets that apologists call a product of their own time and culture. And Russell M. Nelson certainly can't say, If you think the church has been fully restored, you're just seeing the beginning. There's much more to come. If we shouldn't, ask for revelation about something God has already given clear direction. And how are members to solve this conundrum? The current prophet gives a revelation about something God has already given clear direction. Throwing a previous prophet under the bus. Well, that leads us to the ultimate conclusion, which Ezra Taft Benson nicely put out there for us. The living prophet is more important to us than a dead prophet. So if in doubt, just listen to the current prophet. But I don't need to tell you why that is problematic the moment a new prophet comes along. 